So now we're going to talk about the Red Wheelbarrow, another anthologized Williams poem, A Chestnut. It's a poem that everybody memorizes. Who can do it from memory? Anna can. Anna can. <laughs> Go ahead. So much depends upon a red wheelbarrow glazed with rainwater beside the white chicken. Terrific. Okay, so very nice. Yes. <laughs> so I'm going to assign some parts here. Uh, Max, you have so much. Molly, you have depends really hard. All right, really hard. Uh, Molly, you have a pawn. The two of you have the red wheelbarrow glazed with rainwater. You have that whole thing. And Emily and Amaris, you have beside the white chickens. Okay, here we go. Um, the poem was not given a title until it started to be anthologized. It was it's part of Spring and All of 1923, I believe. Uh, and it just appears in these four stanzas without a title, as far as I remember. Okay, so who's got so much? Max. So much he's, he's invoking some kind of uh, plentitude a lot. Everything, even. So much, like when we say that's the, that, that you, you, this means so much to me. We mean in some ways that it means everything to me. Okay, good. It's not so much is not really an Im, uh, the word an imagist would use strictly adhering to the tenets because it's a very um, rhetorical phrase. Sure. It's like very. Yeah. You want to take those words out. You know, in a station of the metro, you wouldn't have the word very in it. Okay. All right, Molly, you have the hardest word in the poem, and I know we're going to start it and come back to it. Okay. Depends. Uh, there's a couple of different ways we can look at it. Um, relies is one synonym, mm -hmm. or something rests on yes. this condition. Yes. Uh, and the other is that um, it's conditional. If something, then Good. something. Lo it's a logical word as well. Okay, we're going to come back to that. Anna, do you have a pawn? Uh, you gave Molly a pawn. I think he meant you. Oh, I meant Anna. Okay. Sorry, you're not prepared. <laughs> That's fine. Um, Upon, I think, it's, it's a preposition, so it could mean literally like on top of, like mm -hmm. depend upon mm -hmm. the desk. Mm -hmm. um, but to depend upon someone or something could also mean that you are reliant on that thing. Mm -hmm. So like I depend on my mother for support when I'm having So the object, the, the thing that one depends upon will follow. Mm -hmm. Upon yep. preposition sets up the thing yep. that's set, stating the positional relationship. Uh, fine. So now, if you everybody put your thumb over the first two lines, now what do we have left? What kind of poem do we have? Image images. It's just it's a it's a pseudo so-called objective. It's a phot photographic thing, a red and a fragment. It's no longer a grammatically full sentence, right? A red wheelbarrow glazed with rainwater beside the white chickens. It's a fragment that describes something. Now put your, take your thumbs off. Now what do we have? Something infinitely more complicated. Yes, much more complicated. Aren't we glad that he put those <laughs> first two lines in? So he's sort of violating the pure, the, the, the spirit of pure description. He's never really been interested in that, or maybe only briefly. And now we have so much depends upon. All right, so what we're going to do in the end is we're going to come back to that and try to understand how those first two lines make all the difference. Okay, so a red wheelbarrow glazed with rainwater. That would be the two of you. What, what, what do you have here? Describe it. Well, it's pretty hard to describe it better than he does. Um, <laughs> right, it is what it it's is. It's very straightforward, but, um, you know, it's also pretty evocative. You can kind of feel that kind of wet morning. I don't know why I think it's glazed morning. with rainwater. Uh, the, the the rain has just come. What yeah. does the rain do to things? Makes it shine. It's life. It gives life to plants in organic matter. But this is not organic. The red wheelbarrow. So what does it do? Well, it's still rain water. It's, it symbolizes regeneration. Right. So it doesn't even have to symbolize. When when it rains, you look. Things are things can be seen clearly. The atmosphere clears a little bit. And this particular wheelbarrow we imagine is newish enough so that the wax or whatever surface is on it so that the water beads up. It's glazed with rainwater. I think it's important too that he used the article a red wheelbarrow rather than the because he wanted to generalize it more rather than talk about this particular thing. He well, he doesn't to... have to. It could be he generalizes but also particularizes it. This right. is just mm. a, a, one, particular. 
Um, okay, so we have a, you know, uh, so where, where are we? What kind of scene is this? Are we in downtown Manhattan where they're talking the new morality? I think we're pretty far away from that. Um, Maybe not I mean, too far, but you, you're a across, city girl. Across so. the river. Across the river in New Jersey, <laughs> where in the yard, even in Rutherford, New Jersey, which has become suburban, one can have chickens and a wheelbarrow easily. Yeah, so we are in some space that's somewhat rural, maybe, or has a little, a little vet, a remnant of rural, right? And how does that make you feel? Okay, I'm inviting you for the first time in this course just to feel. Does the image provoke a feeling? I'm pretty neutral towards it. Uh -huh. It's just a little more intimate to me. It seems more personal. Okay, let's go to the white chickens and come back to feeling. Beside the white chickens, another, another preposition which sets up a position. Amaris? Um, well, it's an extension of the pastoral setting. And now we, again, it's the underscoring of color. So we have red set against white. And oh, yeah. Ju total juxtaposition of red and white. Very striking. Mm -hmm. I'm imagining these are very white chickens. And the addition of uh, the water, rainwater, perhaps creates an effect of blurring or them running together. Or, um, so, Emily, what does the total scene evoke? The, the wheelbarrow glazed with rainwater beside the white chickens. What's that evocation? Of a red wheelbarrow beside white chickens. <laughs> oh, it is only what it is? It doesn't evoke anything? Um, Are you being resistant? Try not to be. Um, I guess a sort of quiet domestic moment observed by the genius of his household. <laughs> okay. Um, Others? Evokes, what does it evoke? Evokes work. A wheelbarrow means that there's someone there to to operate it to for heavy, to carry heavy things, lumber or feed or something. It's, it's minor it's, work. Yeah, a wheelbarrow. It seems it seems at, it's a poised scene of work once done or yeah. Okay. So work or, or work to be done the next day as well. Okay. Keep going. What else does it evoke, Molly? Um, I think it's a very static image. Mm. It seems almost purposely composed, you know, like a still life of red wheelbarrow and chickens. Okay, so it's a still life. Anna, what does yeah, it evoke? I know, I agree with Molly, because the rain isn't falling. The rain is already falling. It's just glazed. What else does it evoke? Allie? I don't know. Am I the only one who feels, I guess I'm of a certain age, I see a looking back to a certain geosocial situation. I you see, about this? I think there's a nostalgia here. Um, I think you're looking at something that's rural, quasi-domestic, static and beautiful, refreshed by the rain. It's kind of a perfect image, right? It's a kind of clear, it's a clear, one of those clear images. So how do you feel about this in conjunction with between walls and, and what we've looked at that's the broken urban man-made, I mean, a wheelbarrow broken. I'm piece being of asked the question about how I feel. I love it. Uh, I think the key here is so much depends upon. So let's get back to it. I'm going to answer, answer your question with another question, and I promise to come back. So how, what, does, what does this poem say from the start? So much depends upon what? Abstract. So much depends upon... The image as a starting point. The image as a starting point. Let's do it some more. So much depends upon... The feeling you get from, the image. The get from, from an image of clarity and stasis so much depends upon... Turning the image into a poem. Making the aestheticizing of the everyday so much depends upon... Keep going. Just the object itself. The object. So much depends upon simple seeing. So much depends upon juxtaposition of color. So much depends upon clarity. So much depends upon our eyes seeing something photographic. So much depends upon seeing nature and composing it into an art composing it, putting the pieces in a scene. So much depends upon precision. So much depends upon seeing a slight nothing scene, a modest scene, and knowing that so much depends upon it. Right? This is a programmatic statement that doesn't feel polemical at all. It feels like he's saying urgently, this is what we need. Not the rural setting in itself, because, and that's your answer, to the, that's your answer to the question you asked me about a relationship between this poem and the uh, between walls. So much depends upon seeing life in the broken green glass. So much depends upon taking anything as a subject for poetry. So much depends upon being able to create beauty out of something that seems unimportant. 
So finally, let's look at the word depends. How else does it work, guys? Okay, I had you put your thumb over the first two lines and you saw a perfect photograph, but it wouldn't be nearly the interesting poem that this is because you take your finger off, you get a poem that says, everything depends on doing this thing, which the poem as an objective photographic piece of realism wouldn't have done. So now the word depends. Somebody really understand the word depends. What depends? Uh, you have something depending from your neck. Did you know that? Oh, yeah, hangs. 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 Depends. Do you understand how depends is almost a sculptural word? Anybody think of an Alexander Calder? What do we call mobile. those things? A mobile. What depends mm -hmm. there? Uh, well, everything that hangs off of the bows and strings. Yeah, it's. The artwork depends. It's a sculptural word. Can we imagine that this scene of the wheelbarrow and the chickens depends from the opening two lines? This is meta meta, <laughs> right? So much depends upon, so much depends upon. You have to have that thing from which the content of the poem depends. Imagism isn't enough. You have to have the rhetorical urgency, a programmatic urgency of seeing the world new, of making it new, and let the content of the poem depend on its form. So if we look at it, then... If you look at it, it looks like the poem, the, the ready-made is depending mm -hmm. from the opening line. Well, the reason why wheelbarrow is perhaps spliced into two different lines is that the old, I mean, well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I revealed there, but... <laughs> Final word, um, Molly, then we're going to exit. I kind of saw it the opposite way, that the poem is resting on the image, and in that way the first two lines are depending and resting upon you know, the image I think that would below. work really well, and I don't mind rhetorically having it that way. But when I look at this poem visually and I think about, I think about ready-mades or I think about going out into the world and finding finding the thing that may inspires make it new. I think about th that which inspires so, falling, following from, and falling from, in a Calderian sense almost, from the assertion that so much depends, everything depends on it. This is vital to us. We have to remember these scenes. I think, in fact, this may be a, a, a memory from childhood, it's possible. We must remember those clear moments.